Of course you know the face, but I'm going to connect it to a name, a government name, not a character name. He is Benga Akinabe. Thank you for sitting down with us today. Thank you for having me. So we're talking about all of these issues surrounding criminal justice all week long, and you and your work sit securely right at the fulcrum of so many of those issues with all the characters that you played. So I'm gonna ask you to indulge me for a minute and talk about the best show I've ever seen on television, like legit The Wire. That show was a revelation and I put everyone who was not on it onto it. Thank you, thank you very much. So do you still carry that around? Because I know people in the street think that they know you but they don't know that they know you through the TV. Yeah, yeah, I think for some people I will always be Chris, uh, no matter what they, what else they see me on. Yeah. And then there are those people who, who like, they think that they know me, um, but it's the, the, you know, the surroundings are different than what they're used to seeing me, where they're used to seeing me, so it doesn't right. exactly catch. Uh, but yeah, that show will always be a part of me. I, I, I'm still very much so Wire family with the cast and the crew and the creators of the show. I'm doing a new show with them now awesome. um, that'll be out in September. So it's uh, it's and it, it speaks to issues that are very important to me and have been for a very long time. So how often does a project like that come along? Because you are, as we'll get into, a conscious person who is doing this part beyond the work that you do as work. But how often do you get a script that sort of meets you where you are in your consciousness with the work that you'll get to do? Not often. Yeah. You know, uh, we're in a, most of the scripts I get are mainly for, they're, they're written to satisfy the part of the business that, that is commerce. Mm -hmm. Those are the majority of scripts that are written. Um, very few of them are written to just tell a, a very real or beautiful story. Um, and then there are the few that you know, where the two meet. So I don't get projects like The Wire often. That being said, I've worked on some really dope projects, though. I've had a very fortunate career. Yeah. You know, I've, I've produced some cool movies that, I, that have spoken to the plight of others that I'm really proud of, one called Home, another called Knucklehead. Um, it's another called Newlyweeds. So it's, I, I, I've got to, to either produce or, or act in some really dope projects. Yeah, for those of us who haven't had the opportunity to delve into the IMDB yeah. and see that long list of credits, I do know that you are branching into the production end. So I wonder what sort of principles guide you in doing the work that you're interested in producing and giving to the world. Boy, I want to tell our stories I want to tell good stories. I, 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 have a, I have an affinity for, for stories and characters who are trying to do the best they can yeah. with their given limitations. Like my, my heart goes out to that. So, and, as, and then on top of that, if the script is really well, wit, well written, mm -hmm. like, I'm like, we have to make this movie. This, we have to take the script and, and put it on screen somehow. It's very difficult for independent films, so if I, if I have an opportunity to, to bring what, what you know, little access I have and, and, and to, to funds or distribution, I'll, I'll do my best to do that. And I've been fortunate. We've had some cool projects have come to, to bear. I like Newly Weeds. We sold that in Sundance in 2013, and, and then some other great movies I'm really proud of. Yeah, so you also have, I'm told, a travel show coming up. <laughs> that you're going around the world, as we tend to do. So what's that about? That That is, uh, that's, it's, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it just yet. Oh, but so it's like the, that. So I've, I hit a nerve I, now. I, no, 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 no. It's all good. <laughs> I'll, I'll just I'll say this. I've developed yeah. a show um, to show the that will take me around the world yeah. to to show the viewer and uh, the uncommon parts of places we think we know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm I'm excited. Think Anthony Bourdain's right. Uh, 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 that meets an idiot abroad, meets yeah. Survivor Man. So looking at that and knowing that we're here in the context of criminal justice, and you are stretching the perception that we have of places that we think we know mm -hmm. and how people present being a black male yourself going around the world and carrying that mantle with you, 
I wondered in your work, which characters make you stretch the most and like assuming everything that you present as walking through the door, but versus the characters that you're given? That's a great question. Who wrote that question? It's a really good, <laughs> that's a really good question. I would say, I did a play in 2010 in mm -hmm. Seattle at the Intamon Theater. Uh, it was a one-person show where I played 11 characters, wow. eight, eight nights a week. Um, eight shows a week, rather, because there are not eight <laughs> nights a week. I wish there were eight he's nights like, a week. He's a hard worker, Because I, I, I need that much time. <laughs> That's, even sleep. that wouldn't be enough time. One for <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> you know? Um, and that pushed me. That was, that, I mean, all my projects pushed me to a certain extent, but that, that really took me to, uh, t that really took me to another, place and it was difficult I played women men Muslim atheists gay straight eight shows a week mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was also around the time when um, the government of Israel had boarded uh, some of these uh, flotillas that had gone to to give relief to to the the brothers and sisters in Gaza right. and uh, and killed a number of the uh, the the people on those flotillas and so it, it was just really so I was really raw seeing what was happening what some of my brothers and sisters Israeli brothers and sisters were, were participating in with my other my Palestinian brothers and sisters so I like and then on top of that I was doing this play yeah so that that was a that was a time where I, I think I was really stretched but it was good it really uh, it really I think it added to the the artist I'm trying to build myself into mm -hmm. So I'm looking at your chest right now. We know a lot of people who do get in some version of notoriety or just followers even have a lip gloss line. They're selling hair accessories. They're selling socks. But this is a project for you that's not just a vanity thing. Tell me about Liberated People. Liberated People is um, my company. We are a for-profit company that that works with nonprofits to help raise money for the nonprofits, to raise attention for the nonprofits. They, uh, it came about through my, my my travels. I'd be in Palestine protesting or in Brooklyn protesting. Um, traveled to Jordan, traveled to different places, and I'd and I'd find myself in the streets with people who spoke different languages, who looked different. And after a while, I started to realize that we were all out in these streets around the world for the same reasons, the yeah. same democratic, fighting for the same democratic rights, the same human rights. Um, but we also felt oftentimes that these, these struggles were unique to our subgroup. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I wanted to make something that, that showed that these struggles were actually what we have in common. And if we recognize, recognize those struggles in, in our brothers and sisters in different countries and different neighborhoods and different cultures as our own, mm -hmm. it'd make us stronger because in the end, we have the numbers. Right? We, we, we think government has the power. It, it's so many institutions teach us that all sure. the time, but the truth is we, we actually do. Like, like money doesn't actually have the power. We, we give money that power and we can take it away. We give government that power and we can take it away. The police the same. So liberated people speaks to that. Right now we are doing a campaign to raise money for the Trayvon Martin Foundation. Mm -hmm. It's the hashtag our son Trayvon. Um, we've created the hashtag our son Trayvon hoodie, and a lot of that it's because like, I remember what 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 Barack Obama said after Trayvon had been killed, that if he had a son, he would he would look like Trayvon, and it just it made me think like this could be anyone's son, and I think part of the problem is that black boys have been dehumanized and not allowed to even have a, a, a childhood, a boyhood. Sorry. So I wanted to make something that kind of that kind of made Trayvon, who's now a metaphor for for all these black and brown boys and and and, and girls who are being killed in the streets or beaten or abused in the streets. Uh, so that that's what we 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 did. And so 15% of all the sales go to the Trayvon Martin Foundation. So just listening to you talk about the passion that you have for being a citizen of the world and adding your voice to the multitudes. I'm wondering, as an actor, activist, entrepreneur, in that lens of justice and criminal justice in particular, what you feel like you have to say in the context of folks who might be here in Brooklyn and might feel disconnected from those other struggles for everything that we seem to be struggling for here? 
there, I would say that this, what's going on here in Brooklyn is going on in, in London, it's going on in Soweto, it's going on in Lagos, it's going on in Paris. It's, and, and, and all those things are important. Like, those, those are our struggles. We need to see that as our struggles as well, because one of the, one of the tools to keep us disenfranchised is to, like, keep us running around with the rat race of our own day-to-day -day lives, our own struggles, and not see, like, like those, those people are as our brothers and sisters. Right. So, like, as soon as we start to do that and connect, and social media has helped to do that, like, it, it, it's not, you're not just fighting me, you're fighting me my brothers and sisters here, my brothers and sisters in, 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 in Paris, my brothers and sisters in, in, in Ghana, like we, we, and we will be vocal and we won't stop. So they, it's, it's a much more difficult thing to do when there's you know, 10,000 of us, right? Um, or even 100 vocal, very vocal people who are dedicated to sure. a cause. And that cause could be you know, environmental rights, women's right, reproductive rights, or bringing justice for black and brown boys who are killed in the streets by the, by the power of the state. I think we've run right up until the <laughs> end of our time here. You know, I've like set it up and you've knocked everything down. So I don't know, something fun then. <laughs> like you, you've been around lots of A-list actors. You're clearly on your way. You're ascending to all of those levels and surpassing them. So what's the most fun about being who you are right now? That's an awesome question. What's the most fun about being yeah, who I am? Like, oh, guys, give me some like gross little perk that people have no idea that it's good to be Bango waking up in the morning. <laughs> well, I'm reminded of that conversation of, of Donald Trump and what's his name? Um, something Bush. Bush, oh, Billy, Bush. Billy Bush on the on the thing, and he's talking about the perks uh, of being Donald uh, Trump. Yeah. I'm like, oh wow, what if, what if me? I'm I'm just happy to pay my bills. I get to do that regularly. Yeah. It's a it's a good life. You know, I get to like in the middle of the day, I get to come here and do do this. I'm not like I have a pretty creative life. I've I've started an awesome vintage furniture line. Um, called Ennington Vintage, where I design, I design or redesign, you know, beautiful antique and 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 vintage pieces I find all over the world, uh, and that's been pretty dope. I get to, like, I get to do things like liberated people. If I see, if I see a like, a, a cause, yeah. I get to apply what I'm like my 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 resources towards that, um, and I get to have ice cream and brownies every <laughs> night. That is a vice. I, I, that's, it's Every a vice. Every actress is rolling her eyes <laughs> because they've been splitting hamburgers eight ways no. for the last ten years, and this one eats ice, ice cream, cream and brownies. brownies every night. It's a, it's an issue though. It's, it's a problem. But I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do. It. I got to afford myself some some problems. Rewind for me just sixty seconds and go back to your furniture company, yes. so we can represent for the Nigerian folks who are watching out there. The name of your company. Ennington. Vintage. That's the name of my company. Ennington is Yoruba. It means a uh, person of story, or there's a story behind this person's life, birth, um, and it can be a name given to a, a, a man or a woman. And uh, it's it's one of my middle names. And it's because like all these pieces, all these vintage and antique pieces have stories, yeah. and like they have this energy that preceded me coming into contact with them. And I, I you. They're so, and they're also often just better built than the things that you can find today. Yeah, yeah. So it's about finding some jewels <clears throat> and and bringing new life to them, giving them, adding to their stories, and giving them new new stories, and and then sending them out to the world. You can check it out at anytonvintage.com. So um, what we say is that you know with Anitone you get to sit on a story. Awesome, jewels, polish, send them out into the world, telling stories. That sounds like a career. Yeah, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.